there are probably better ways to spend a day than driving a McLaren Elva along Pacific Coast Highway, but I can't think of any right now. Instead, I'm thinking about an 800 horsepower twin turbo V8, low slung bodywork, and getting to 60 miles per hour in less than three seconds. I could be thinking about wearing goggles and not getting bugs in my teeth, as the standard McLaren Elva doesn't include a windshield, but this one does, though it still offers no side glass or roof. That could be problematic after the extra cold and rainy winter we've just had on the west coast, but today, thankfully, we've got classic Southern California sunshine. Taking full advantage of the weather and location meant enjoying the topless McLaren Elva along the Pacific before heading into the canyons near Malibu. <laughs> 804 horsepower and an exhaust note straight out of an F1 circuit, you really need a track to properly test the Elva's performance parameters. But we still got a good taste of its advanced mid-engine carbon fiber chassis wrapped in aggressive carbon fiber body panels. Lightweighting efforts are seen throughout the Elva, including carbon fiber seats, titanium brake calipers, and of course, no side windows. US cars include a windshield because some states require them. But the Elva's $1.7 million starting price does not include an audio system. You have to pay extra for that. If you do, the audio system includes marine grade, as in boat, speakers, to endure the Elva's open top only driving mode. As we piloted the Elva around Malibu, we couldn't miss the many unique design features on this multi million dollar supercar. Whether it's the lack of exterior door handles, because you open the door using an interior pressure switch, or the low-mounted air vents to make them more effective in an always weather-exposed cabin, the Elva takes some getting used to. Rear visibility is often a challenge in mid-engine cars, but the twin arches that rise behind each seat mean you're totally depending on the rearview mirrors to know what's going on in back. Speaking of what's going on in back, in the Elva, there's no rear engine cover to open, so if you're hoping to see that 800 horsepower V8, you're out of luck. And the closest you get to a trunk is a tiny storage area underneath those rising arches. About enough room for a bowling ball, or given the Elva's mission, a helmet. It's worth noting you also have to open this body panel to put fuel in the Elva, because like exterior door handles, McLaren didn't want to clutter up the body with silly things like fuel doors. If the Elva's body is missing some common items, it's also a wash in others. For instance, most cars have one or two exhaust tips, while some have as many as four. The Elva has four, but they are located in two different areas and point in two different directions. The lower tips point in a conventional straight back direction. The other two point almost straight up, a rather unconventional direction. And below all of these exhaust pipes is probably the most aggressive carbon fiber rear splitter I've ever seen. Big fins and big openings suggest big time downforce. That splitter is just one of many aggressive aero cues seen throughout the McLaren's exterior design, including large air intakes mounted on the leading edge of the doors and even larger intakes mounted behind the doors. All of these pipe air into the engine compartment to keep that flat plane V8 breathing fresh, cool atmosphere. Eventually, I stopped marveling at the Elva's creative interior and exterior design features and started marveling at its driving dynamics. Like the 720S it shares a platform with, the Elva is exceptionally responsible to driver input. Turning the wheel causes a change in direction right now, and throttle or brake applications have the same instantaneous effect on velocity. The McLaren's dual-clutch, 7-speed transmission sends power to the 20-inch rear wheels, where sticky Pirelli P0 tires claw at the pavement. Those same Pirelli tires, size 19 in the front, direct the 28-pound hypercar around corners while feeding critical information to the driver. Driving the McLaren Elva isn't the exercise in excess you might think it is. I mean, sure, it doesn't come with side windows or a roof or door handles or an exterior fuel filler nozzle or a windshield on most of them actually too. But when you're driving it, it's actually pretty manageable and pretty easy to live with. It's still not gonna to appeal to most people, $1.7 million and you're missing all those things, but McLaren's only gonna make 149 of them. So it doesn't have to appeal to 99.9999% of the population, and there will still be more people on the planet who want one than exist. And you can include me in that group. <laughs>